Hey guys, welcome to AI with AI. This side, Asif Imnad. In today's video, we are going to discuss about precision, recall, and F1 score. You may be confused by looking at the title, but trust me, this is one of the most important aspect in machine learning. This comes into picture when you talk about measuring your machine learning algorithms. So people often ask, what is the accuracy of your model? So in the previous video, we discussed how to calculate the accuracy of the model. But I told you accuracy is not always the good measure to find the accuracy of the model. So how do I really measure the accuracy? So it's all depends on the type of data. And this is one of the most frequently asked interview questions. How do you measure the accuracy of the model if the data is imbalanced? Is accuracy a good measure always in machine learning algorithms? So let's see what is precision recall and F1 score. If you remember, in the last video, we discussed accuracy is not always the good major. But I didn't tell you the exact reason. If you have not watched the previous video where we discussed about confusion matrix and why the confusion matrix is so important and confusion matrix, which is not so confusing. How can we use a confusion matrix to measure the accuracy of the model that, that we already discussed in the previous video? Please check out that video in the I button and even in the description. So why I'm saying accuracy is not the best measure always. Imagine when the data set is not balanced. Imagine when the data set is biased. What do you mean by biased? What do you mean by a data set is not balanced? You can imagine a cancer data set where a number of patients, those who are coming for the checkup, in case of critical illnesses like cancer data set, we can easily say that out of 1000 people, there can be hardly one or two person, those who have a tumor detected or a cancer detected that is positive, right? So if you look at this out of 1000, only one or two people are positive. Let's take online transaction example. If I consider 100,000 transactions, there would be only one or two fraud transactions happening, right? This is again an imbalanced data set where data is biased, where we have a negative more and positive very less. This is not 50-50 or this is not even 60-40. This is 99.99 .99 and only some fraction of the data is positive. Right, so this is called the imbalanced data set. Let's take some example here so that this will be more clear for you. Let's say there are 90 people who are healthy, they are negative, and 10 people, those who have diseases, they are positive. We are considering only 100 data sets here where 90 people are negative and 10 people are positive. Now, let's say our machine learning model perfectly classified the 90 people as healthy, they are negative, and also classifies unhealthy people as healthy. I'm saying 10 people are also classified as healthy, right? So if I put this into the confusion matrix, then true negative, they are not positive, right? So truly classified as negative is 90, they are healthy. And if you see falsely classified as negative, that means they are actually unhealthy, but they are classified as healthy. That is false negative is 10, right? And false positive, true positive, we are not worried about it. We are keeping it as 0, 0 for now. If you consider these results, and if I put this into the confusion matrix, this is how it will look like, right? We already seen this in previous video. Truly classified negative is 90 people, and falsely classified as negative are 10 people. False positive, true positive are 0, 0. If I calculate uh, accuracy for this model, for this example, that will be true negatives plus true positives, 90 plus 0, divided by all data sets, right? That is 100. So 90 divided by 100 is 0.9. That is the accuracy of our model is 90%. So do you think the accuracy of our model is actually 90%? Imagine it is only for 100 data points. You can imagine where we have a real time scenario where we'll have 10,000 data points, even millions of data points. How can we get the better accuracy? In such scenarios, there are chances that accuracy of my model would be 99.99 .99 even, right? So accuracy is not good measure always. So do you see anything fishy here? The accuracy in this case is 90%, but this model is very poor because all 10 people who are unhealthy are classified as healthy. Then how can we say the accuracy of model is 90%, right? It is not 90% accurate. In such examples, I mean, when the data set is biased or unbalanced, the accuracy is not a good metric. Then what is the exact measure to 
to measure the accuracy of the model. Let's see this with some example. And this is where the machine learnings precision recall and F1 score comes into picture. We have already seen this example in the previous video, but I'll consider the same example again and we will try to find out the precision recall and F1 score for the same example. And if you remember the accuracy that we got, let's see the example first. So we already seen this example in the previous video, but just to quickly recap, you know, we have 100 people. You know, this is about if a person is pregnant or not pregnant, right? There are 100 people, which includes pregnant women, not pregnant women, and men with a fat belly. So 100 people, we need to classify whether pregnant or not pregnant. So out of this 100 people, 40 people are pregnant. Remaining 60 people are not pregnant, even including men with a fat belly. And if I put these results into the confusion matrix, just to quickly recap, there are 55 true negatives, meaning person not pregnant and rightly classified, they're not pregnant. The person, those who are positive, meaning they are pregnant and truly classified as positive. So true positive, true negatives, we want, right? And false positive, false negative, we don't want. So if I get 100% for true negative and 100% for true positive, so there are no machine learning algorithms, those who are 100% perfect. So we will always have some impurities, misclassifications. And hence in our example, we have five false positives and 10 false negatives, falsely classified as positive, where a person is not pregnant, but machine learning is classifying a person as pregnant. But just by looking at the belly size, machine is saying, this person is pregnant, which is absolutely wrong, right? But this is very dangerous, right? False negatives are very dangerous. Why? Because person is pregnant, person meaning a woman is pregnant, but our machine learning algorithm is saying she is not pregnant, which is really bad. Imagine a same scenario for critical illnesses, right? Like cancer. Person actually has a cancer, but machine learning algorithm says person doesn't have a cancer which is really bad. So this is called falsely classified as negative, right? And now if I try to calculate a precision recall F1 score by looking at this data, let's see how it looks like. To calculate a precision, we also call it as positive predictive value. A precision is equal to true positives divided by true positives plus false positive. This is how the simple equation looks like for a precision. So ideally speaking, if I have zero false positive, that means my answer will be one true positive divided by true positive will be one. So if I get one, that will be a good classifier, but that will not happen in real scenario, right? So in this equation, if the false positive value increases, the precision value will decrease because this is a denominator and which we definitely don't want. Let's try to put the values we got in our example into a precision and let's see what is the precision we are going to get. So for our example, 30 women are rightly classified as pregnant meaning truly classified as positive and five women are classified as pregnant but they are actually not pregnant which is falsely classified as positive true positive divided by true positive plus false positive that is precision so i'll put 30 so if i put these values into the equation the accuracy i'm gonna get is 0.85 that is approximately 85 percent that's what the precision i'm gonna get for this example it's very simple amazing isn't it Let's see what is the recall value for our example. And this is how the equation for recall will look like. This is again true positive divided by true positive, but this time they are not false positive. These are false negatives here, okay? In case of precision, if you have seen, we had false positive, right? Precision, false positive, but in case of recall, we have false negative, falsely classified as negative. So in this equation as well, if we get false negative zero, then the value of recall will be definitely one. True positive divided by true positive will be one, right? But uh, ideally that will not happen. And hence I can easily say that if the value of false negative keeps increasing, then recall will be very poor and which we don't really want. Now let's try to put our values in the recall and let's see what is the recall value we get for our example. So in our example, 30 women are actually pregnant and our machine learning is also classifying them as pregnant. That is why it is true positive and 10 women are not pregnant. But the important thing in case of recall is false negatives. A 10 women are actually pregnant, but machine learning says they are not pregnant. It is falsely classified as negative. Okay. 
Hence, true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. If I put values here in the equation, I'll get 0.75. So if you see, the recall of our model is very less. Comparing precision, let me go to previous slide here. If you see, it is 0.87 for precision and for recall, it is 0.75. Okay, so this is how we actually measure the accuracy of our models. Then what is F1 score? F1 score is not anything different. F1 score is just a combination of precision and recall, which will combinedly give me the exact balance between precision and recall and the more accurate accuracy for my model. So F1 score is nothing but the combination of precision and recall. So in the industry, generally people will not ask you for the accuracy of the model. What they will ask you for is precision recall or the F1 score. They'll say, what is the F1 score of your model? Okay, so when you hear this term called F1 score, you can just imagine they are talking about precision and recall of your model. So this is how we measure the accuracy of our model in the real time scenarios. And even by looking at the equation of precision and recall, you can easily say that precision is only considering false positives and recall is only considering false negatives, right, in the denominator but it is not a good measure again. So we need some combination of precision and recall. We should also consider false positive and false negative. To get the combined accuracy, we have a F1 score. And how does the F1 score equation looks like? It's very simple. So F1 score is nothing but precision multiplied by recall divided by precision plus recall multiplied by two. So F1 score is nothing but two times precision into recall divided by precision plus recall. It is just a combination of precision and recall, a more accurate accuracy of precision and recall, a combined effect of precision and recall, nothing different. So in this equation, if you observe, if precision and recall are one, then only the F1 score will be one, right? And F1 score will be high only if both precision and recall value are high. So F1 score is kind of a mean, it's a harmonic mean of precision and recall and it is a better measure than the accuracy. Now if I put the values in F1 score, let's see what is the accuracy we get, what is the F1 score we get I mean. So I know the precision for my example, we calculated it before, 30 divided by 30 plus 5, that is true positive divided by true positive plus false positive, right? That is 85% approximately and the recall for our example is 0.75 that is 30 divided by 30 plus falsely classified as negative this is falsely classified as positive so by looking at this i can say precision is high recall is very low what is the combined accuracy that is f1 score right so if i put these values in f1 score equation two times precision into recall divided by precision plus recall so this will give me a mean of precision and recall that is approximately 0.799 meaning approximately 80% accuracy we have got. So F1 score gives us the better measure. If you remember the accuracy for our same example, when we calculated the accuracy in the previous video, we got 85%, right? But we said accuracy is not a good measure. That's why we are calculating F1 score. But just to recap quickly, accuracy is nothing but rightly classified values divided by all the values which are also falsely classified okay so the accuracy that we got for the same example was 85 percent but the f1 score i'm getting is 80 percent by looking at these numbers you can easily say that the f1 score for our model is 80 percent approximately and the accuracy of our model is 85 percent that is why for imbalanced data set, for the biased data set, accuracy is not a good measure. We calculate the accuracy by using these matrices, that is precision, recall and F1 score. I hope you are able to understand what I am trying to explain here. If you still have any confusion, any question, please comment down below. I will be happy to help you guys. And if this video added a value in your knowledge, make sure to like, subscribe and comment. Also share with your friends. Okay. Alright, so that's it for this video. See you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.